Hello everyone. My name is Hemu, and today's I am. This is a just a demo class for our upcoming training on Panorama, right? So you know, in this particular training, I will go through with all the concepts of Panorama. It's a basics to advanced training. So I will start from very basics, and I will go till the advanced level. Or I can say till the tech level. I will go through with the troubleshooting as well. What are the troubleshooting? Like we will have a multiple. Use cases with regards to troubleshooting on Panorama. So I will try to cover all of them. I will basically integrate my Panorama and Firewalls with the expedition tool, which is a Palo Alto migration tool, right? Or almost all the use cases like Palo, Palo like ASA to Palo Alto migration, checkpoint to Palo Alto migration, right? All these type of migration we will I will cover and also I will show you. Let's suppose you are doing Palo Alto to Palo Alto migration, right? Let's suppose you are right now having Palo Alto 50 to 20 box right now in your environment, right? And you want to basically migrate this box with Palo Alto 54 45, right? Then then how you can do that? Because you know if you you will not able to migrate directly. OK, there are lots of changes used to happen because, you know, interface type is different on this model and different in this model, right? Then how we can create the interface mapping and all right? There are multiple things, right? So these type of use cases I'm going to cover basically. And these are the use cases which you will also face now, right now in the industry. As I have mentioned, this particular training, I will start from 30th November. And it's a weekend's batch, guys. Just remember, so your classes will happen on Saturday and Sunday. And timing is 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. So it's around four, four hours of session. We will have a 15 minutes of break between that particular timing. And if you are really interested for this training, so this these are the two contact numbers where you have to reach out to us. The first contact number belongs to me. So you can also reach out to me directly in case of any issues or if you have any doubts, any questions. OK, now. Now, before going into what are the things I'm going to cover, let me just go through with a couple of our details. So like this is our video portal. If you will basically open your browser and if you will type. Learn.cnets.com, so you will basically land here and this is a video portal where you will get all our recorded sessions. So if you are interested, you do. You can also able to purchase almost all the recorded sessions from here. We do have a two YouTube channels. This is our first YouTube channels where you will get lots of videos on Palo Alto Firewalls, on Panorama, on AWS, Wireshark. Multiple videos are there. We have another YouTube channel with the name of Skilled Inspirational Academy where you will get lots of video with regards to Azure, F5, LTM, GTM, ASM, right? So you can also do check out our YouTube channels here. Now. Now, guys, let me just go through what are the things we are covering in this particular training. So as I have mentioned, it's a 40 hours of training, 40 plus hours of training. So as per my understanding, this training will go around 48 hours. You will get the lifetime interview support on this training. You will get the class notes and the use case workbook. You will get the lifetime access of all the recorded sessions so means whatever session. I will I'm going to take I will record these sessions and I will provide the access of these recordings for your reference through a video portal and these the X these are the lifetime validity basically. We can also able to build the lab on your laptop and also Google Cloud. I will help you with the steps. It's a weekend's batch. During the session, you can also we can also able to discuss your any type of issue, whatever you are facing in the in your production environment. We can discuss that one. And also, if you will face any type of lab related issues, you can also discuss with me. We will also help you with the mock interview supports, right? So if you have any interview on Panorama of Firewalls, you can reach out to us. We will guide you through the process. We will take a mock interview, right? So all these things will be covering in this particular training. Now let me go through with the course content of this particular training. 
So guys, put your attention here because this is the core, like whatever I'm covering. So if you will see here, as I have written here, like this is a, this training basically start from basics to advanced. So I will cover from very basics and I'll take you towards the advanced level. Okay. I will go through with the all the advanced level troubleshooting and most of the time you will see the troubleshooting with regards to the commit. Because you, you know, panorama, we are not using for data processing, like right? data traffic is not there in the panorama. And mostly we will have a issue with regards to the commit with regards to the config management only. Maybe like we are not able to establish the connectivity properly with the firewalls, right? And if we have a other integration of this panorama with the log collectors, right? Then there is a, some troubleshooting required for that. So this troubleshooting, I will go through with that. Even though I will also explain you the advanced architecture, like how demons are connected inside the panorama, how each demons, they will communicate with each other, right? Inside the panorama. So these particular things I will cover in the troubleshooting session. I will basically do the installation of expedition tool as well. And we will see the real life Use cases like how we can migrate ASU to Palo, Juniper to Palo Alto, Checkpoint to Palo Alto, right? How we can make the bulk change. Let's suppose you have a 25,000 security policies. And on these 20,000 security policies, let's suppose you wants to basically enable the, you wants to basically enable the log forwarding, or you wants to configure the security profile group. Then if you will start doing manually, it's become, very difficult for you, right? To you will you need to add it each and every twenty five thousand policies, and you have to do it, right? Another way you can basically use the expedition tool, and you can just make the bulk changes. Just make that bulk changes in single go. You can able to modify all the twenty twenty five thousand policies. Then with the help of Panorama API, basically, let's suppose. Right now, there is a one use case. You have a 10,000 policies, which is locally configured. And you have a another 3,000 policy, which is configured through the panorama. But now you also wants to onboard these 10K policies into the panorama. How you can do that? Oh, so such type of use cases require the panorama API, how we can basically load the changes without affecting the current running configuration, right? How we can merge these configuration, right? So for that, you need a knowledge of API, right? So I'm going to cover this API as well. Now, guys, let me tell you what is the prerequisites for this training. You must have an understanding of Palo Alto Firewall, actually. Palo Alto Firewall understanding you have, then only you can join this training. I am not going to discuss the firewall related concept here. I will totally focus my discussion towards the panorama only. So you must need a knowledge on Palo Alto devices, Palo Alto Firewalls, how can configure security policy. The basic stuff is also sufficient, okay? So, you know, I will start this particular training in, in first session. I will go through with the overview of Panorama. What is Panorama? What are the deployment mode of the Panorama, right? What is the different, different types of modes offered by the Panorama, hardware modules of Panorama, right? Virtual modules of Panorama, right? I will go through with these details. Like I will tell you what is M100, then we have a M200, then we have a M300. M500 will be there, M600 will be there, and the latest version is M700 and M300. These are the these are the latest models available on the panorama, right? How we can dip, how can we can we have a different modules on VM as well, right? For panorama, then how we can deploy this panorama. So all these things I'm going to cover. I will go through with the deployment methods. What is the best deployment methods for panorama, right? Then I will go through with the lab setup. I will explain my lab environment also, how the device is connected and all, everything I will cover here. I will go through with the panorama commit walkthrough and we will go through with the commit troubleshooting. And you know, if you will see here, all this particular details comes under the commit walkthrough only. I will go through with the stages of the commit. 
like what happened in the commit queuing what is pre commit what is phase 0 what is phase 1 what is phase 2 right i will also go through with the commit operation how basically this commit operation works what is the job queue what is job processing queue right then what is what is this commit task queue or the default task queue all all these things i will basically discuss in detail right then i will go through with each phase what happens in each phase basically what is phase zero what happens what is what happened in phase one what happens in phase two right everything i am going to cover here i will also go through with the architecture right how this particular in during the commit basically we have a main daemon called management server daemon then how this management server daemon is basically communicating with config d log receiver d report d user id d right then the how we can do the things with the cli or web servers right what is this local host 10000 right what is this event manager how things happening how they will base all these this log receiver daemon will communicate with the local log collectors or the cortex data lake which is a cloud based logging solution from palo alto right so i will go through with each and every details in depth basically it's not like that even though it's the same thing i will go through with the logs i will run the advanced debugs command and i will go through how things are happening basically then i will go through with the panorama management plane overview and the management plane troubleshooting i will go through with the management manage multiple firewalls using panel how we can do onboard the firewalls right how we can manage the license of all the firewalls how we can basically manage the software updates dynamic updates of panorama and palo alto firewalls right because you know let me tell you guys see if you have a panorama then all type of software updates all type of dynamic updates we will only download on panorama and we will push these particular updates from Panorama to all your firewalls. Okay, then how we can do that? What is the best practice of doing all these things, right? Once this part will complete, I will go through with the Panorama device groups. Means here I will go through with the device group hierarchy. What is the what is the use of device group? How we can you configure the object and policy using this device group, right? how we can create that global device group, how we can create a region specific device group, then how we, we can create a device group for head office, how we can create a device group for branch office, right? So multiple things are there and I'm going to cover all these details with examples, right? And I will going to do these things with practically as well, right? I will make a device group for head office firewalls. I will make a separate device group for my branch office firewalls, right? And we will make the necessary changes, necessary policy, security policies, net policies, right? Your decryption policies through these particular device groups only. Then I will go through with the Panorama templates and template step. If you want to make any type of changes with regards to network and device step, then you have to basically configure the template. In template also, we have a global template, then we have a region specific template, then we have a country specific template. Like there's a multiple formats. So I will go through with two, three formats. So you will get the idea. But whatever the followed by the industries, I will go accordingly only. Then we will discuss the head office and branch office firewall interface, policies, object, net configuration according to the design. I will go through with the SSL decryption, app ID configuration, content ID configuration, your IPsec VPN configuration, global protect configuration, your high availability configuration, right? And I will also configure the HA between the panoramas. I will configure the HA between the Palo Alto firewalls through panorama. I will go through with the, how we can perform the upgrade and downgrade of panorama softwares and dynamic updates, and also Palo Alto software and dynamic updates pro panorama right how we can manage all these particular tasks i will basically configure the log forwarding and log collection and even though i will deploy around three panoramas as a dedicated log collector right and how i will go through with each and every step how we can configure panorama as a log collector how we can forward these logs towards these log collectors so everything i'm going to cover 
administrative accounts i'm going to discuss because you know we can create a different different administrative accounts as well let's suppose if your organization having two reasons right some of the sites you are having in europe region and some of the sites you are having in asia region right then let's suppose we have a five engineers who is working for asia specific devices and we have another four engineers who they are basically responsible for managing the europe region devices right so what we used to do in that particular case we will basically assign the dedicated account basically so a particular user only able if that user belongs to these five users then he can he have a full control on ac specific devices but in europe devices he will only get the limited access or either only the read only access right so these things i am going to cover aggregate monitoring and reporting i will go through how you can generate the reports right how you can configure these reports then panorama use cases like for locally or panorama managed firewalls or basic troubleshooting and panorama advanced troubleshooting using the cli commands so what are the cli command which we can utilize to do the troubleshooting right then i will go through with the expedition tool setup in vmware workstation then panorama and firewall integration with the expedition tool then asa to palo alto migration juniper to palo alto migration checkpoint to palo alto migration panorama rule work bulk config change and the panorama api overview how we can use the api to do the different different configuration right here you know here i have put day by day detailed course content basically like in this panorama overview what i am going to cover i will cover what is panorama panorama use cases or benefits of using panorama palo alto two tier architecture benefits of panorama centralized configuration and management aggregate logging and reporting distributed administration i will go through with the palo alto operating system panorama hardware models and the panorama virtual models right and all, whole this particular training i will basically delivered on pan os 11.1.4 h1 this is the most stable version as of today so i will use the same version then the second class i will go through with the understanding of palo alto panorama deployment methods right what is the panorama system mode what is legacy mode right what is the panorama management only mode what is the logger mode panorama deployment panorama mode panorama scalability panorama vm series right how we can we can able to deploy panorama vms in your ES esxi environment vmware gcp cloud aws cloud azure cloud right hyper v panorama m series models panorama vm all these details i will cover here i will go through with the panorama m series models and the network segregation right by using the different interfaces device management and device log collection collector group communication device deployment we will go through with the lab setup as well i will explain all the top logies right how do we can configure the initial access what is the default how we can make the default configuration changes interface configuration ntp dns general settings right register and license the panorama panorama gui overview panorama license and software updates plugin architecture services interface configuration then in commit walk through i will go through what is the management plane configuration management config operations right manage the backup including export device state from the firewall config export config how we can take the scheduled backup right save and export of the panorama configuration then in commit walkthrough i'll go through what is commit partial commit commit force auto commit commits phases right then commit phase logs how we can run the debugging into the management server demons to check all these file like right? what are the different type of config files which is created during the commit process like merge sp.xml last candidate config.xml right running config.xml right all these particular files i will basically explain use of all these files then commit fail layers we will see right if you will see multiple like almost everything i have basically covered here right if you will check here then panorama management plane troubleshooting right 
I will go through with this particular demon called mass study, right? So you know, if you want to perform the demon level troubleshooting, you have to know this particular architect architecture. How basically your data plane, generally we don't have a data plane. So you know, this is the diagram from the firewall perspective and the management, right? In management plane, if you will see, because in your panorama, mostly we have a management plane, right? Then how this master the demon, how each and every demons is communicating with each other. What is the use of system demon, right? What is the use of management server demon? How management server will communicate with the device server demon, user ID demon or log receiver demon, right? If you have any type of problem with regards to authentication, then how we can check the log of authority demon, right? So all these particular demons I'm going to cover in depth. So I will go through with the management plane architecture first, how each and every demons is connected, right? Master D communicate, master demon troubleshooting, system demon troubleshooting, then management server demon troubleshooting, device server demon troubleshooting, right? We have a different, different functionalities of all these demons, basically. What is the dagger demon? L2 control, H agent, log receiver, syslog ng, right? If there is a, some problem you are facing with regards to the syslog, right? Means then how we can basically check the syslog related demons. So all these particular demons I will go through in detail. Then we will basically go through with like how I can manage the multiple firewalls using Panorama, how we can add the firewalls automatically add multiple firewall by a CSV file, secure communication and troubleshooting guys, I have seen like in most of the deployment, people are not using this secure communication. People used to just onboard the devices with the Palo Alto default certificates. Even though they are not going to enable anything with regards to secure communication, whatever the default configuration is there, every organization doing with that. But I have seen there are lots of vulnerabilities. I have observed basically, and there's a high chance anyone can basically attack in your infrastructure if you are just following the default configuration. They are, because in default configuration, they are using couple of algorithms which are, which are prone towards lots of attacks actually. Then we will go through how we can enable the secure communication, secure communication settings, how we can modify what is the use of each and every settings at the firewall, at the panorama level, at the log collector level, right? Then how panorama communication happens, like panorama HA communication, panorama managed firewall communications, panorama and log collector communication, log collector to log collector communication, how they will communicate, what are the port numbers they will use for the communication, everything I'm going to cover. Then secure communication, how to maintain security using SSL, TLS and certificates, right? So we will create a dedicated certificates. We will not use the default certificates basically. And we will create these certificates and after that we will create SSL, TLS profiles and we will use these profiles for client and the certificate profile, escape support, CRL and OSCP support, secure client and server communication, certificate types, customized communication, how we can go with the customized communication, right? Panorama secure communication, what is authorization list, check authorization list, authorized client base on serial number, disconnect bait time, check server, identity there are multiple things we are having in your secure communication like what is the master key manage device license secure communication cli commands right certificate status everything we will basically all this configuration we will test in our lab environment we will do the license management software management dynamic updates of panorama and palo to firewall by a panorama right panorama device group Configuration includes your device group overview, device group, configure device groups, then group and push to HAPS, panorama objects, objects, right? Create an object, unused shared object, everything we will discuss. Device group hierarchy, device group hierarchy, sample configuration, override option, move option, right? How we can basically override or use the move option, we can move the move the security policy or object from one device group to another device group, right? So we will utilize that particular thing. Policy of or order for operations, right? Rule base, 
configure rules, right? How we can move these rules and all. I'll go through with the pre rules, post rules, right? All that details in advance. Now, same with the panorama templates and template template stack. Basically, if you want to configure network and device related configuration, then we have to basically use the templates. So I will go through with the template creation, te template stack creation. What is the global config template, region config template, local config template, right? Template reusability variables in panorama variables play a vital role. Basically, I will go through with that as well. Variable types and importing variables values using Excel file, troubleshooting variables related issues using management server debugs, right? Template count, shared template profile, reference templates, everything I'll cover. And once this part will complete, after that I will basically start onboarding my firewalls and I will basically start creating the templates for my head office firewalls, my branch office firewalls, right? What are the net interface related configuration policy, object, net, configure according to the design and all, right? So everything I will cover here. Then we will also go through with the SSL decryption, app ID, content ID related rules, right? Everything we will see practically. IPsec and global protect VPNs we will configure, right? Then Panorama HA also we will set up. We will set up a HA between Panorama 1 and Panorama 2. And I will go with the active passive HA, right? And all the details with regards to HA, how we can configure it, right? Prerequisite for HA, priority and failover in Panorama HA, failover trigger settings, synchronization between Panorama HA peers, not synchronized, network SNMP related settings, scheduled configuration X export right panorama HAP setup and management all these details then upgrade part i will cover log forwarding and log collector so what i will do i will create a dedicated log collectors and we will configure everything with regards to log collectors basically i will add the different different desk i will basically forward the logs into these log collectors from firewalls i will fetch these logs from the into my panoramas. I will create the reports as well. So everything I will cover. Then administrative accounts, I will go through with that. How we can create admin roles, how we can create administrator accounts, right? How we can create these admin accounts for template and device group. What is the access domain? So everything I will basically cover here. How I can I will integrate my panorama with LDAP servers. So I can basically use these LDAP users for the authentication and all right. So these are the things which I'm going to cover guys in this particular training. I will go through with this particular use case even though in today's class also I will explain how we can use the locally or the right now we have a firewall which is managed locally then how we can onboard this firewall into the panorama. So this is the one which I'm going to discuss today. Now with regards to lab, so in my lab, basically I will introduce five panoramas. So I will use two panorama as a HA pair, active passive, and I will use another three panoramas as a dedicated log collectors. Nine firewalls will be there, including one hardware device, PA440, and we have a eight Palo Alto VMs. So I will go like that, like I will create one HQ site, HQ1, HQ2, branch one, branch two, and I will also create one dia, dia site. In dia site, I will use my PA 440. So this is how I will you, I will build this particular lab, right? And you know, all this particular, these four sites basically, I will deploy as a HA pairs, okay? So it, it's a, like there is a very big lab basically I am going to deploy here. I will also use Windows Server where I will go through with the installation of Windows Server, integration of Windows Server for the AD authentication, all the LDAP authentication and all right. Then expedition tool, Linux Server, Cisco routers and switches as well for making the connectivity. So this is what I am basically building. If you will see, this is the one SNP of my laptop logic. So you know, I will 
generally introduce this type of lab. So this is my one, one portion of my lab. Similar this portion I will basically build here. N1 HO related networks I will build here. Or like dia related networks. So this is how my lab looks like that. So there are a few things which I have to just connect only. I have installed everything, only the connectivity part, and I have to just build this reference document, that's it. Okay, so this is the course content, guys, which I'm going to cover now. Now, with regards to today's topic, let me just go through with that. So today, uh, what I will do, I will go through with the this particular topic where how to add or migrate a locally managed firewalls into Panorama for management panorama management from the panorama and i will also just give you the glimpse of commit walkthrough i will not go in depth today because commit walkthrough is a four hours of session but here i'll just cover few points okay now so to do this particular practical what i have done i have my panorama this is a totally new panorama basically running on 10.2.9 h1 and right now, if you will see here in the Panorama tab, if I'll go into the summary, you can see we are not having any devices. I have this firewall. Right now, all the sec all the policies I have configured locally, like I have a security policies. I have a net rules. I have a decryption policy. I have a couple of objects. Uh, address groups. I've created application groups, application filter, services, service group, right? I do have, I also created the antivirus, anti-spyware, vulnerability, URL filtering, all of them, right? Log forwarding will be there and security profile is also there, right? In network tab, I do have a virtual router configuration, interface configuration, zones configuration, then your global protect, portal and gateway configuration, right? Then the device level also, I am having configuration like LDAP, right? I do have a couple of certificates. So now what I am doing now, I will basically, now what I want, I want to basically, let's suppose I want to start managing this box now from the panorama. What is the way? So, you know, I will also say whatever use case I will cover, I will create a such type of documents basically. Okay. And these documents also I will provide you. Okay. So let's suppose in this document, if you will see how to add a locally managed firewalls to Panorama, right? So now let's try to do this particular task. So, you know, what is the very first task? You have to basically log in into the firewall and you have to basically export the current configuration. So I'll go into my firewall. To operations tab and I'll just click on export named configuration snapshot or what I can do let me just go like that I'll go and I'll just create a saved con named con configuration snapshot I'll give the name panorama demo 01 xml Click on OK. So first I will basically take save this particular named configuration snapshot. Then what I will do now, I'll just export this configuration. Panorama demo.xml. Okay, let me download on my desktop. This is the file which is downloaded. If you want, you can add it with Notepad++. You will see we have almost all the configuration with regards to Panorama in this, right? Sorry, we have all the configuration of our firewalls here. And along with, if you will check here, you will also able to see the certificate on the same. See, we have a certificates and with the private key. See? So guys, whenever you are exporting your configuration, make sure Make sure basically to remove these private key if you are basically sharing this configuration with some other teams, okay? 
Otherwise, if they will get the private key, they can do lots of stuff. They can basically hijack your global protect related sessions. They can basically decrypt your global protect packets. Okay, so, so, so many problems they can create. Now, this is the first task. Now the second task, what we will do now, we will onboard our firewall into the panorama. What we have to do, we have to onboard our firewall into Panorama. So for that, what we have to do, I'll go here into my firewall. I have to copy the serial number of my firewall. I'll go into my Panorama. Summary, click on add. And just put the serial number, click on generate auth key. Copy this auth key and guys, this auth key is valid for 24 hours. Click on OK. And do the commit. Let me save this auth key here. I'll go into my firewall as well. Device tab management panorama settings and here i have to put the ip address of my panorama and panorama ip address is 192.168.137.51 192.168.137.51 copy paste the auth key click on ok do the commit Commit at Panorama is completed. Now commit is going on at the firewall level. We'll wait for this commit to complete. This is the CLI. And right now, if you will type this command, so devices all right now we are having only one device on the panorama but connected is no there is no connected devices so panorama status if you will check the panorama status right now you can see we have a panorama and connected yes means from the firewall there is a connection and if you will type here Right now connected, no. Go here. Go into your panorama. Go to summary. Refresh here. See device is connected now. State is connected. So if you will check here. You can see status is connected, even though sometimes you can also issue this command connected. So it will only show you the connected devices with the panorama. Okay, so this is this is the command which you can also try. Sometimes you can also try this command. So net stat numeric, yes, match. or match 192.168.137.21 and you can see 3978 right so i was using i have typed the wrong port number 3978 when you will issue this particular command you will also able to see there is a one tcp connection is established because you know firewall and panorama they will communicate using the port number 3978 just remember okay and you know when they will they used to connect with each other there is a also you can also perform this particular thing let me just show you okay less mp log ms dot log and today is 11 17 right 
So you can see these are the logs which we have to check. There is a one device config manager connected to sysd. And if you will go at the end, let me go at the last. And if you will check here, you will be able to see. You will see a successful connection here at this particular daemon. There are lots of logs basically. So you know your process has been started from here. Mm -hmm. So generally, these are the two demons, management server and the config D. So these demons log you have to check if there is any type of issue you are having with regards to secure communication. So here you will be able to see the details. Let me go at the end, control C. Right now it is a connection with update server is created successfully, processing a status message for dash. I think this is the serial number of my firewall. Let me go here. Dashboard. Yeah, 4328, right? And you will see a connection here, see? Just take this particular serial number. And you can basically get all the details, right? What's happening and all. See? This particular message. Your device is connected now, right? So, you know, these are the messages we have to found when we are doing any type of troubleshooting. If there is any problem with regards to your secure communication, right? We will be able to see this particular log. What? We will see the logs here, okay? Now. So, right now you can see status of this firewall. It is already onboarded, right? It's connected now, but you know this configuration is not it's still we it's still this configuration is on the firewall. What we have to do, we want this particular configuration on the panorama. In panorama, we have a we are not having any templates, we are not having any device group, we are not having anything. Okay, now guys i will take your questions even though the chat one also after the demo only okay and during the demo i will not answer but otherwise it break, break the flow for now okay so after the demo we will discuss everything so till this step we have completed right now what we have to do See, we have onboarded our firewall successfully into the panorama. Now what we have to do now, we have to import the firewall configuration into panorama. So what we have to do, we have to go to inside your panorama, set up operations. We have to go into the panorama, set up then operations tab here, right? And we have to export the device configuration to the panorama. So I'll go here into your panorama operations and you can see this option import device configuration to the panorama you can click here and here you will get your devices now what type of devices you will see let's take an example we have a 10 devices in your panorama let's suppose we have 10 firewalls in your panorama which are onboarded out of 10 around eight firewalls basically Let's suppose out of 10, these eight firewalls we have already added. Means these eight firewalls, they are having template and device group. Then what, what you will see, you will see only two firewalls here. 
you will only able to see the firewalls which are not having any type of device group and template from previous okay i'll select this particular firewall now i will not going to use firewall master key for now import device shared object into the panorama shared so where you want import rule into the pre rule section or the post rule i want to put on the pre rule section so i'll click on pre rule click on okay and as soon as we have oh, we have basically imported the configuration from your firewall you can see we have seen now these two new tabs policies object network and device group you can see into the policies objects we have couple of objects here refresh the policy object i can see let me check the network okay in network the interface is also there in device tab ldap is also there right somehow in policy i will not able to see so let me go let me select the pan palo alto fiber template and you can see i have all the rules because i was looking into the wrong template previously now go to into panorama and now you can see we have our one device group and one we have a one template and we have one template stack in this template stack already your firewall one is called and this is your device group now this part is done and after that we have to move further and now what we have to do once we will import the configuration properly right we have already seen right we have imported even though we can also check in your config audit for this particular config but not required because we know it is already successfully imported you will get this message right now what we have to do now we have to push this particular configuration bundle into the firewalls because right now if you will check your firewalls all these policies are locally managed see they are the locally managed right you can able to do any anything they are not coming from the panorama because when you will see any policy from panorama you will get the template here you will get a template icon here now what you can do you can go again into panorama setup and you have this option export or push to device config bundle let me just check one more time export and push to device config bundle select your device click on okay push and commit could not create configuration import bundle of the device for this device there is some error we are getting let me just check into the task manager so import job was successful let me go into the summary let me first also do the commit into the panorama right now it is out of sync Because we have not done the commit so that's why i think we are getting that error now we will do push and commit it will work it's done go here again into the setup tab select export and post device config bundle click on push and commit 
See, it's working this time. It's succeeded, right? Export is succeeded. Now you can go here, refresh. Now you can see all these rules is, if you will open them, you will only get the read only access because they came from the panorama. If you will go here, do the commit. Now we have a net policies. This is also from the panorama only, right? So this is how guys we will basically do the, this is how we have, we will migrate the locally managed firewalls into the panorama managed firewall. You will have the network related configuration, global protect related configuration, everything will be there. See export load is completed. Go here again. Now we have to be see we have completed this step. Now what we have to do. Now we have to make the necessary configuration changes and we have to do the commit again. But this time we will do the commit in your device group. Click commit and for the commit type device group, select the merge with device candidate configuration, select include device and network type. This is most important, guys. Include network, include device and network template. If you will not select that option, then your commit will fail. What your commit will fail? So what you can do, you can go here, click on commit. So there we don't have any local commits. I'll go post to devices. Click on add it. Make sure. Just one let me refresh it again. Because I'm not getting the proper options. Add it. They should highlight properly, but they are not highlighting properly. I don't want to select the force one, one minute. Let me put into the proper, go here, a CP is 3% only, that is fine. So, you know, here we will get the select option. Maybe some type of cosmetic bug we are having in this OS. That's why it's not coming. Generally, it comes like that. So click on OK. Let me just select this admin one. Yeah, there is a, some bug. I It seems basically here. Otherwise, you know, we have to, we will get that option to select here. Okay. So let me do one a small change here. I'll go into object tab. Let me create one test object. T dot T dot T dot three slash 32. Just a test one. Commit to panorama. I was aware about there is a one bug we have on this OS with regards to this actually. At the interface level, I have seen there's a bug. 
see your security zone is none here right when you will open that was the bug but in actual it is called so that was bug i am aware about that version but you know i'm not sure why it also do have one gui bug not an issue because by end of the day we are not using this particular panorama 10 to 9h1 we are using 11 cds so they don't have any such type bugs there Post all changes, go here. So as, as they have mentioned, we have to make sure these two options is selected. By default, generally these options are selected only, but you know, I'm not able to get that. I'm not able to see it properly, right? So let me just go and commit. Let's see if this commit will fail, that is okay. We will see few things. When you will hit a commit all from Panorama, you can also able to track the same thing into your firewalls, local firewalls. See, commit all will be there. Came from the Panorama. We can track here. If you want to see more details, we can also run the debugging like tail follow yes, MP log. Config D dot log. Here you will be able to see this particular commit phases, right? See phase one is succeeded. You can see. You can also issue this command so management clients. Here also you can able to see the commit status. So I'll go through with that as well. That's not a problem. See, you will see commit phase two is also succeeded, succeeded right? So like I will go through with how we can validate all these locks basically. If there is any type of issues we are having, by looking into these logs, we will get to know. See, there is a one some validation error, right? Commit has been failed. There are some validation error. Log setting profile. So we have this particular problem in your log profiles. Send syslog server profile is not a valid reference. And even though you at the device group also it just failed because of that only, right? So this particular thing easy to troubleshoot. I as I know that. So if I go here into my objects, you will log forwarding profile. This is the one, right? And I have called this log forwarding profile into all of my Objects go into this objects tab, log forwarding. Okay, these are the log forwarding profile that is fine. I'll go here. No, we don't have any changes to commit. Let me click on commit and post to the devices. Add it. Go to into template, just deselect these templates. Select device group only. And this option is not visible. Otherwise, we have to select that option. Click on OK. Click on push. Again, we can go into task manager. You will see the new commit 
is came from the panorama you can open you can track see validation error this commit below must fail because of the validation it is also failed because of the syslog server right so if you will go here and just check for the syslog We are not having any type of syslog servers, right? There's no syslog. So better I can go here to log forwarding. First into firewall, we do have a syslog or not? Here also we are not having any syslog looks like. No, we don't have. So I'll go here, log forwarding. And for this syslog server, I have to delete syslog servers from all these forwarding profiles because I'm not having any syslog profile actually. Here also we have a syslog. So whenever we have a syslog, we have to delete. Okay, now we are not having any syslog, right? Click on OK. Click on commit. Commit local to your panorama first. And then we can basically push to the devices. Add it. And you know, in Panorama also, you can basically run the debugging actually. You can check the logs, basically tail follow yes, mp log config d dot log. Because this is the daemon who is responsible for the configuration management, right? If you have any type of problem with regards to the configuration, you will be able to see the error message here. can see we are able to see lots of failed message, right? There is some problem we have with regards to the X path as well. You know, this X path related things needed the panorama, panorama API knowledge, basically. Phase one is almost successful. Against all the management clients, right? You can see. Yeah, phase two is also successful. So there is a something failed here. This we have already. Okay, commit is completed, right? There are some errors, but you know it's okay. Commit at least succeeded now. This is, I think, last commit which was failed. Go here to task manager. Commit is succeeded. One more thing, go to into your panorama. You can see this time configuration is in sync. Right, policies and template both are in sync, which means we have successfully onboarded the devices actually. And we have almost all the configuration here. See, now everything is through the panorama only. John, they are coming from the panorama, right? 
Your virtual router is also from the panorama. You can see location is template stack. So guys, this is what basically this is how we have to do the onboarding or this is how we can onboard the locally managed firewall with the panorama management. So first task is completed. Now let me just try to go through with the some basics about the commit walkthrough. I will not go in depth, right? So, you know, with regards to the commit process, basically, in your firewalls, when you will perform the commit, what is the main use case of commit basically? So your commit, what you used to do generally, in your Palo Alto firewall, we have a two type of configurations. We have a running configuration. So running configuration is the active configuration in your device. This is a active configuration in your device. Means whenever your firewall receives any type of traffic, it is going to process that particular traffic using this configuration. This running configuration have your routing related configuration, your security policies, your net rules, your IPsec BP and your global protect like all these things comes under the running configuration. And guys, whenever you will make any type of changes in your firewall, any type of changes, these particular changes will go inside the candidate config file. Means always these changes will go inside the candidate config file. Means, you know, in Palo Alto firewall, whenever you will make a configuration changes, it will not affect your running configuration directly. But if you will came from the Cisco background, like Cisco ASA or Cisco router switches, right? What used to happen whenever you will make any configuration, it used to reflect the running configuration, but it's not true for Palo Alto. And one more thing, guys, this candidate configuration generally is stored by the Palo Alto firewall in the SSD. And you know, your candidate configuration is a part of management plane. In your Palo Alto firewall, we have a management plane and data plane, right? So you know this candidate configuration is available inside the management plane. And, the, and firewall is stored this inside the SSD. And your running configuration is a part of data plane. And that particular configura configuration is stored inside the RAM. When you will, you will issue a command called commit, what it used to do, it will basically copy the changes from candidate config to the running configuration. Whatever the changes you have done, so only these changes it will copy from candidate config to running config. And I'm talking about the normal commit here. We do have a one more commit option, which is commit force. What commits commit force will do? Let's take an example. You're running configuration file having around 50 MB. This is the size of your running configuration and your candidate configuration size is also 50 MB. Now what you have done, you have basically made lots of changes and all these changes go into the candidate configuration and now your file size become 54 MB after doing some changes. And now if you will issuing the commit force, what will happen? Your entire configuration from the candidate configuration will be copied into the running config. It means all the 54 MB file will be copied from candidate to the running configuration. That is the commit force. Commit force means it will basically replace the running configuration file entirely with the candidate configuration file. If you will run a normal commit like this without commit force means there's no force. If you will use the normal commit then what are the changes? Changes we have only 4 MB, right? Only these 4 MB file got copied. Only the changes will got copied from candidate to running config. There's a one more commit, which is auto commit. So we have a multiple use cases for auto commit, which I will cover in your live sessions. So as I have mentioned, 
in your data plane we have a running configuration which is stored inside the ram we have a control plane or management plane where we have a candidate configuration where basically it will store that particular file inside the management plane and all these files it will store at the xml format in the xml format okay now when you will basically perform the commit whenever you will perform the commit what used to happen basically there is a proper stages for commit your commit process will go through with the commit queuing because let's suppose there are three admins admin one admin two and admin three these are the three network engineers who is doing their changes right and let's suppose all these admin they have done the commit at the same time what will happen when all these three network admin let's suppose at 10 30 they did the commit so what will happen now your commit process for different different admin go into the commit queue okay that will basically go inside the commit queue from commit queue it will go into the pre-commit stage and from pre-commit stage it will go into the phase zero phase one and phase two these are the stages of and commit process now guys if you have any type of problems let's suppose any your palo alto devices or any your panorama what used to happen all these devices they have a capacity they have a, some capacity means inside the queue only three jobs can store or four jobs can store or the 10 jobs can store like i'm talking about the panorama vm or m700 panorama or the palo alto 7000 series like 10 commit jobs can we go inside the commit queue and let me also tell you one thing i see this commit process is utilized by 18 other processes as well inside your palo alto fire what are the other these 18 other process like when you will do the ha sync config sync via ha this also required the commit whenever basically you will ins you will configure the download and install automatically for dynamic updates like for content updates for your threats updates for your wildfire updates also right they will also utilize the commit process so there's a multiple commit because you know there's a multiple jobs can be happen due to this particular commit and there's a multiple jobs are available into the commit queuing then they will go into pre, pre commit state then phase zero phase one and phase two and most of the time your commit will fail in phase zero and phase one mostly your commit will fail into phase zero and phase one your if you will reach till phase two then your commit never fails commit will not fail in phase two now how this particular queuing works let's take an example from the panorama we have hit the commit and push to the devices then this particular message will go to firewall from panorama or let's say we did the local commit into the firewall whatever right if we we can also do the commit into your firewalls through panorama commit via commit and push we can also do the local commit if we have done the local changes so what this firewall will do whenever basically this firewall receive a commit from the panorama or the local commit what it will do it will save a copy of candidate configuration what it will do it will first save the candidate configuration file save a copy of candidate configuration before it will put this particular commit inside the job queue so you know in pan os basically we have a job queue inside your pan os we have this particular job queue right so local commit or panorama post commit in queue into the job queue so you know your commit will store into this job queue like commit one two three 
four, five, like that they will basically store into the job queue. Now from this job queue, basically, jobs from job queue get queued into the job processing queue. Now job will go into another queue, which is known as job processing queue. Now from this job processing queue, basically what used to happen here, we have a commit related jobs and we have a non commit related jobs. So all the commit related jobs will go inside the commit task queue and all the non commit related jobs will go inside the default task queue. Now from this commit task queue, your phase zero, phase zero, phase one, phase two will start here. They will dequeue and the processing will start. Dequeue the job and processing will start. So that's how the queuing mechanism works inside the Palo Alto firewalls with regards to the commit. And you know, there is a multiple task happens basically during the job queue. There's a multiple things used to happen. Job processing queue level, multiple things used to happen, right? I will not go in that much depth today. Okay, we will discuss these things later in depth. Now let's try to understand what is this phase zero, phase one and phase two. So in phase zero, what used to happen whenever you will basically hit a commit. So, you know, in phase zero, your Palo Alto firewall assigns the object IDs. So there is a one process called ID manager. That ID manager will basically assign the unique IDs to each object. Let me tell you, whenever you will make some configuration changes on this device, generally to store these changes, you need something, right? You need some type of database. We need some type of database where we can store these changes, right? And when we will store these changes inside the database, each database has the unique UUID. It has a unique UUID because when when your firewall receive any packet, and let's suppose now your firewall start parsing this particular packet against the security policy checks, right? Then it will fetch these rules using the UUID, the unique ID entities basically. So all each and every objects will get the unique IDs during the phase zero. And also they will create a one most important file, which is known as merge sp.xml file. This is the file which is created by using the panorama post configuration and the local firewall configuration. They will basically use both these configuration files and they will create this merge x merge sp.xml file. And you know later on this particular merge xp dot merge sp.xml file they will use in phase one for the validation. What they want to validate? They want to validate the errors, misconfiguration errors against all the management clients or against the demons. What are the management clients where the validation happens? So if you will simply go here, let me just type here control C. And if you will type this command, so management client, you know, when you will hit a commit, right? You know, these are the demons where my management server D1 will contact for any type of errors. If there is any type of errors, these demons will tell you like routing related errors, your route D1 will tell you. HA related errors, HA agent will tell. Interface related error, if manager will tell. Device related error, errors, device demons. Your IPsec VPN related errors, IC manager. Key related errors, key manager. Reporting related report D, logging related problem, log receiver, DSCP, where receiver, REST manager, your global protect related problems, REST manager will tell you. If you have any problem with the user ID, then user ID demon will tell you, right? If you have any type of problem with authority, then authentication demon will tell you, right? So all these particular demons, they will give you, they will check against the commit stages and they will basically tell you if there is any type of errors. So in phase one, what used to happen basically, as I have told you, 
it, they will go through with the validation process and also they will create one more last candidate config.xml created. They will also create this particular file. Last candidate cfg.xml created in this file overwritten during each commit. So means if you have a problem with your commit process, then what used to happen, you have to basically locate this particular file and you can basically compare this particular file with your actual configuration file for the errors, for misconfiguration errors, and you will basically get your answers. And at phase one management server daemon reaches to the other daemons for the config errors. Then, then we have a phase two. Phase two flips the pointer from candidate config to the running configuration. It is never designed to fail and daemon validation is also performed in phase two. Means in phase two, your final, your pointer will directly move from candidate config to the running configuration. Means your actual objects gets copied from the candidate configuration to the running configuration. This is your phase two. So guys, these are the three phases of your commit. And if you want to see these phases, let me just go through with that. I'll go into my panorama. Let me take two sessions for panorama. And one more sessions for the firewall. So here, what I will do here, I will run this one tail follow yes, MP log, config D log, log. Here we will able to see all the logs with regards to this particular daemon. Okay, and here I will basically show you, show, or let me also run one more command, tail follow yes, MP log, MS dot log. Okay. Now I'll go here. Let me go into objects. And you know, I have created one dummy object, right? Let me just delete. I'll go and I'll delete that one. When you will delete, let me just go and now let me do the commit. So I will go and I will do the commit to the panorama. See, you will see a status is going right now. It is active, right? And you will see. I will go through with these logs again. Okay, let's just wait for this logs to complete. See, commit is succeed into the panorama locally. Control C and guys, I'm running the just normal debugging. It's not an advanced level debugging, like at the dump level or the debug level. When we will run, the, because these are just info related messages. So you know your configuration, your commit will start it from here. And if you will start reading this particular file now, so I will tell you from where you have to start, you can see. When your when you will do the commit, what used to happen, it will store, it will create a one file dot candidate hyphen snapshot dot XML dot 106. This is the random number. This is the first file which is created. Inside this particular location. Commit candidates. It is also creating this revertible hyper running config.xml. Why it is creating? Let's suppose sometime we used to revert the changes, right? If we are reverting these changes, then it will use this particular file, revertible hyper running hyper config.xml file. Okay, so these are the two most important files. And after that, it is creating one more. What is this transform files? So guys, you know this transform files they will use. Let's take an example. In your panorama, you are running your panorama with pan OS 11. 
and your firewalls you are running with pan OS 10.2 means version is not similar. So to support the backend functionality, because there may be a feature which is available in your pan OS 11, but which is not available in pan OS 10.2 there might be a chance, right? So to support that type of feature back, back, backward functionality, right? They will use the transform scripts basically, okay? So it's the same thing. And all these scripts, they will store inside CLS OPT plugins, this particular folder. Now go down. We have to read these messages carefully. Now I'll go here. I think it is like you begin the phase one you started here, but I think it shows somewhere phase zero as well. We can see the phase zero somewhere. Version is 10.2.9, right? That is fine. This is also fine. Phase zero is not visible, right? Somehow. So, you know, I'll go, I will come back to phase zero again. Okay. So, you know, this phase one, Phase one is succeeded against the report D demon, right? Report D, then your crypto D. So H agent, right? All these demons, they are changing code D, log D, user ID. So, you know, phase one was successful against all these demons, right? And after that, you can see we have your phase two. Phase two is also started, it was also successful. When your phase two is successful, so what they have done now, they are looking this particular file, candidate hyphen snap.xml does not exist, fail to find the entry in the hash. Go down, these are the OIDs and all. Replacement is done. somehow this particular phase zero is not visible guys i'll i'll check again okay now what i can do i'll come back on this phase one because otherwise i have to run the debugging at the advanced level i which i don't want to try today now i'll go again here and let me go on my security policies and i'll just make a I will just change the order or I can do one thing. Let me change the order of this rule. Okay. Let me do the commit locally. And then I will push this commit towards the firewalls and we will see the same thing on the firewall level as well. In firewall, we will check tail follow yes mp log ms dot log and let me also run the debugging here tail follow yes mp log config d dot log because this is the new daemon they have they have basically introduced so if you are working on old firewalls like pan os 10 and all you will not see this particular daemon it's done now let me go and let me post the changes Now here you can able to see. See device reported phase zero was successful. Phase one now phase one messages here we have.
still phase one messages. Now phase two messages. We will wait for this commit to complete and after that we will start looking into these logs again. We have a lots of logs because you know this daemon because it is also managing the this configuration now. So it will create lots of error messages. If there is any a type of error, it will found right. You will get so many things. One is completed now. They are basically making the changes on your device group. Template stack is done. Phase two is also succeeded. Let me do the control C and let's try to check. So, you know, this is your phase two messages here. Your phase one is completed here, right? When your phase one is completed and after that, you can see time to pen management client table do phase two, right? So it has already sent this message to start the phase two. So now your phase two has been started, right? And phase two is also succeeded. Phase two reported completed, right? Client table do commit. And you know, this is your phase one. Phase one is succeeded right everywhere. And you can see your phase one is here, right? And you can see we do have a phase zero was also succeeded, right? But you know, in phase zero, because it is not doing the validation against the demons, so we will not able to see the demons late logs like see phase one has been succeeded. Sorry, phase zero has been succeeded. You can see this particular message. Okay, so these are the comment phases and you know if we have any problem, let me let me just introduce one of the problem. Okay. Now, let me do that. What I will do this time. I'll go here into my network tab into virtual routers. I have this particular default route, right? I will just clone this default route. Add just columns. Now you can see I have these two default routes with the same metric which is not allowed, right? This is not gonna allowed by the firewall. We cannot have two routes with the same metric or same AD value, right? Now, this is the one, one misconfiguration I have done at the route level. Now let me also make one more change at the, at your global protect level. I'll go here. Let me configure none instead of this IP. And before doing the commit on panorama, what I'll do, let me run the debugging on the panorama. And I'll go and I'll do the commit into the panorama. Let's see what happened now. Now your commit must fail on your phase one. Let's see what happened. At the panel level, it is succeeded. Now let's go and just do the push to the devices and go into your firewall. and run the debugging. 
and go here control c type so management clients and this time i will show you phase zero was reported successfully but you know your phase one will fail template and device group level it should fail here let's wait here we will wait here to see and you can go into this task bar here coming bit warnings Firewall one stack. In the routes, we have this mistake, right? Let me recheck. Same default route, same next to with same metric. And we have configured the global protect also. remove the IP address from the gateway none edit select your template and template stack click on ok click on push Route D reported successfully. We are having these warnings and let me just see if it has received that configuration or not. It is not receiving that configuration, right? Maybe somewhere it is just doing the some correction. See, we have this otherwise, you know, this RAS manager will fail. This is the first thing. The second thing, your route D daemon will fail this commit actually. We yeah, have make this changes. Let me check one more thing. Device group. Template device group. Go here. Reference from the firewall template.
local commit is done. Let me do the push to the devices. Edit selection, select this, select your template and template stack. Okay, so previously you can see like if when you will run this command, if your commit is failing at phase one, right? Of what's happening, you will be able to see here. Like right now, you can see previous commit has been succeeded, and your phase two is okay against all the demons. You can check. Right, so you here you will get the details. If there is any errors or warnings, you will be able to see the here as well. Template stack, it just passed. We have few errors, right? That is okay. This is for device group. Let me just refresh here. Even though you can see, we have configured these two rules, right? But only one is pushing, maybe some issue. Okay, that's why maybe it is not able to do it properly. And the main problem which I'm facing with this pen OS version, like I'm not able to select that option right when we are doing the commit push. Like these option is not visible right here. I'm not able to see what's happening basically. Okay. So guys, you know, all your, whatever the practicals I will do, I will do in the latest version only. So where we will have everything up and running. There's no bug on that version. So things will be up to date there. Okay. So like the, like this time you can see like here, basically these are the, these are the demons where you have to check all the log files, right? while doing the commit, if we have any problems, we will be able to see the commit related problems here. We have created one failed, but you can see, yeah, you can see route the reported command failed, right? So you can see, I can see this particular thing, route daemon has been failed basically, failed to configure that part, okay? So that's how we will basically do the troubleshooting. We will able to see. And if you will check for Rust Manager. Rust Manager we don't have here. And if you can also give a one command here, Management Client. Then you can see phase two is okay and all. Okay. So this is how we have to check the things. So this is it, which I wanted to cover with regards to this particular demo. And these are the two topics. This comment walkthrough we will discuss in depth later on. I will go through with this management architecture also later on, right? How the management plane is connected, right? Now, as I have mentioned, guys, this training I'm starting from 30th November. It's a weekend's batch. Time is 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. IST. Fees for this training is 10,000. For Indian students and 150 USD for international students. With that said, which I wanted to cover with regards to today's class.